Hey guys. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> I had some more drama. And some good uh, experiences also. So I'm going to update you on what's going on. Remember last week, uh, <coughs> Chris was uh, doing, giving me lessons or something to teach or to look for secrets. I've got secrets. And he gave me that dream where it repeated over and over and over and over. Well, he gave me another one this week because he said he was going to be doing it this week. And he did. And there was more to it, but I remember this. I'm at the coffee shop of work in Windsor where I used to work for real. And I'm having this dream. And this dream was all night. It's just me working in the coffee shop. And each time I had a dream of me working in the coffee shop, it was no people all the way up to mass insanity where people, thousands of people were coming in, hundreds of people. And I had to serve them all. And they're stealing. Each one, it's like, there was a lot of people in, the one I remember the worst was, there was a lot of people coming in the coffee shop. I had to serve people. I'm the only one working. People are then, when I'm working, people will go and steal stuff. They're stealing my stuff, my own my own stuff, and they're stealing stuff from the coffee shop. And I'm trying to catch them, and I'm running around losing my mind. And finally I said, to hell with it. I said, coffee shop is closed, everybody get the fuck out. And then, and then I woke up, right about there. And I woke up, and I go, well, this is my dream. And, uh... I just started swinging, beating the shit out of everybody in the coffee shop, just get, got rid of them all. Anyway, that was my uh, stress relief, that was the last one I had, and each time Christ was in there watching, sitting at the counter, drinking a coffee, watching, and I had to serve him, <laughs> and by the, by the sixth dream, by the sixth dream of me working in this coffee shop, I got to know who the guy was, right, but I didn't know until I woke up. It was weird. And he was he was pretty cool, Christ. He was a pretty good guy. It's like it's like the dream starts and I'm I'm doing I'm serving customers and all of a sudden a guy comes in and it's him, it's Christ. And I ask him we're we're talking about stuff, you know, while I'm getting his coffee and that and he goes, Thanks and he goes and sits down and he just sits there at the counter watching me work. <laughs> it's fucking funny. Anyway, every time in the dream. And each dream had a different scenario. One where I was bored, nothing to do. One all the way up to people stealing stuff. And people stealing stuff when it's really busy. And I'm running around losing my mind. And I guess that type of dream, series of dreams, always repeating, is going to give up my secrets. I don't know how, but I guess they get something out of it. So, that's pretty crazy. Anyway... That dream kind of pissed me off. I was pissed off. Not 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 raging, but, you know, pissed off. I'm like, I wasted a whole night dreaming the same thing over and over in scenario, different scenarios. That pissed me off. Then, the next thing that pissed me off was... Oh, man. That was... What was I doing? I had a, uh, the next day I had a dream where I was in a restaurant and there was a lot of people in the restaurant and it was really crowded and we we're sitting at a table, me and some people, which turned out to be my spirit family. We're sitting there and we're eating Italian food. It's really spicy and Italian. There's an old Italian grandma. She was cooking up some nice stuff. She's walking by and I'm looking at all the plates and I'm smelling it and the pasta and everything is going on. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting hungry. I woke up, my mouth was watering. But what it was, I, as soon as I woke up from that dream, my ass, I, I screamed, I go, Jesus, is that a real place? And he goes, yeah. Do you like it? And I go, I loved it. And he goes, he goes it's a restaurant in St. Lucian. And I go, what's it called? And he goes, Luigi's. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Luigi's. So there's a restaurant 
insane illusion called Luigi's, and they took me to it because I got all pissed off and had to deal with that stupid dream. Okay, so after that, that was fun. That was nice. I got to go to a new restaurant. Then, oh, the worst happened. Yesterday, I was... I don't even know. No, yesterday I go to bed. Grace takes me back to the Jesus, or the Christ, that did the coffee shop dream over and over and over. Took me to him. And he goes, sorry about this, but we got to do it. We're going to heal you up. And all of a sudden I heard my brain started ringing. And I knew they would put me in the fry box. Now what the fry box is, they put this thing on your head. And they stimulate all your neurons. They stimulate all the neurons in your brain. And your neurons in your brain go... And it makes like a white noise. And what it does is... From the white noise in your brain... <clears throat> it maxes out all your neurons in your brain. And you go fucking insane, basically. It's so loud you can't stand it. And they did that to me for 20 minutes on max and I had to lay there dealing with it and when they turn it off everything goes nice and quiet and, you're be and it's beautiful and it, it basically it overdrives everything that you were doing so I'm at Luigi's I'm doing my stuff I'm talking to my kids I'm talking to my wife I'm doing this and that and the other thing and all of a sudden they do that they max out my neurons and it's all gone. All the voices are gone and everything. And I can go to sleep. And it supposedly heals the skins, too. I don't know how. The ethereal skins. But it works, anyway. So, they did that. Now, what happened was... What happened was... The day I made the trucks in my last video. The day I made the trucks, uh, the truck I was showing you. I also, I never put in that video, I made 17 to 20 kayaks. Top of the line kayaks from Current Design. Google it, Current Design Kayaks. I made 20 of them, different sizes. I made 20 of them in the illusion. And we took them down to the train car where I live, on the beach, and we went kayaking. I went kayaking with my daughters and my wife and Christ were all kayaking and Julie she's just a little tiny thing and so she was out there kayaking and I'm, I'm walking beside her in the ocean man and now when I'm telling you this I'm really doing it I'm there I'm there I'm, but it's sort of like let's say three quarters real it's like I'm there doing all this but it's three quarters real if, I, if that has it like when a wave when you're helping your daughter with the kayak teaching her how to paddle and she's like eight years old or something you're teaching her how to paddle and all that and you're keeping an eye on her because you know you're out in the middle of the ocean not in the middle but off on the out in the ocean she's all nervous and she wants to kayak and Angela she took off like a rocket so I'm helping her and she was out there with Jesus so I'm helping Julie kayak because the girls never went kayaking before. Never. Never. So I made kayaks. Now they can go kayaking. And the reason I made the kayaks was I'm going to rent them out and make money. And I'm going to rent out the trucks and make money. For people to go on vacations, throw a couple kayaks on top, go away for a couple weeks, have a good time. And I rent the truck and the kayaks and the canoe and the chainsaws and the axes, whatever the hell they need, I got it. Right? And that's what I want to do when I get there. Now... Because I was there doing that pretty much all night and part of the day, not part of the day, like when I sleep, relax, whatever, I am talking. I'm there. So what they had to do was take me out of St. Lucia, my perception. I was in St. Lucia so much that I, I was losing time in reality. They call it losing time in reality. I spend more time in St. Lucia than I do in reality here walking around the streets doing things I'm more there than I am here 
And when that happens, it's called losing time. Rich, you're losing time. we got to heal you up. So they took me to the brain guy who was at me, made the same illusion disappear, closed me up, put me in the illusion, and said, fuck off, more or less. And so that's what happened. Then, forward a couple of days, after they fried my brain, I woke up right after that, and I'm totally pissed off. Totally pissed off. I'm raging because I hate it. There's no, no need for it, but they did it. Then, after that, the next day, I'm pissed off about something else. I can't remember. But I'm still pissed off and I'm still fighting. And then I got fighting with Jesus. And me and Jesus are fighting. And I tell him this and that was bothering me. And I go, the reason I'm still here talking to you and saying Lucian and everything is because of this, 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 and this. Same thing over and over and over again. Then... I have, and other people, millions of other people, if you believe me or not, and I don't give a shit, have like an avatar that is like a ghost that helps you do things, okay? Most people, I know a lot of people, mostly all of them I met, have the avatar stuck with them. And this avatar, all it does is help you throughout your life, but you don't even know it's there. Like, you'll have ghostly things happening, things will move, and you think it's a demon, but it's actually your avatar. So when you get rage, angry, your av avatar comes, takes all the rage and energy out of you, okay? Now all that energy is in your avatar, and he's going to get rid of it, but until then, he's got all the rage. And so he's raging, he'll slam doors, he'll, he'll move things across the table. And it's your avatar. He just took all your rage and put it into himself. And now he's a big ball of fucking rage hanging out with you. And he, he acts in sync with you. So you'll see stuff moving around the house. It's not a demon, it's your avatar. And what he's doing is what he's supposed to do. Take the energy out of you so you can live normal life. And so then he'll take later on, he'll take, or Christ will come down, take the energy, or a spirit guide will take the energy out of him and put it back in the fucking universe where it's supposed to belong and take the rage away and then he also takes garbage psychological garbage your personal garbage yeah that's all your personal garbage he'll take it and you'll see a black thing moving around the moving around the house okay that the black thing moving around the house is your avatar but he's taking so much garbage out of you he's cleaning up he's cleaning up the house He's taking garbage out of you. He's constantly working to take care of you. He's not a true spirit. He's like an avatar. His little function is to take your garbage, garbage energy, into himself. And as he's doing that, you'll see black, you'll see white energies, orbs. Like people call them orbs. That's what that is. All it is is an energy ball. When you see them coming out of my head here in this video, it's just energy, man. When energy is released, it goes whoop, into a ball and flies away with its programmed stuff, whatever. That's what it is. Okay? That's what an orb is, energy. So, and plus there's other orbs too, but mostly it's energy. 90% of them, what you see is the energy. Even if a spirit walks by, and you see a glowing thing, that's the energy of the spirit manifesting closer into this reality. Either way, it's still energy. All right? Now, what happens to me is this. For the past eight years, more or less, they need me stuck in same evolution. But when I go to sleep, my soul takes off and goes exploring. I'll take off, I'll go play hockey, I'll go into a bar, get drunk, get into a fight, I'll go to the nearest girl that wants to get laid and get laid, and I'll, this is what I do when I'm dead, well, I'm, as soon as I fall asleep, not, not nothing bad, it's just, it's more drama, it's exciting, or I go out and create things, I'll go camping, I'll go hunt butterflies, I'll go look for UFOs, or whatever I do when I'm sleeping, they don't want me doing that anymore. Christ don't want me doing that because I always get in trouble and I get in fights. And if you watched all my past videos, you know a lot of bad people are out to get me. 
because of what I've done to them and what I do, and they want to know. So Crazy doesn't want me going down there because I get my ass kicked. I come back with a knife stuck in my chest and a knife stuck in my head and a knife stuck in my kneecap. He don't want me going down there anymore because I get beat up and I beat people up. Well, it always ends up in a fight. Just always does. I don't know why. He don't want me going down there anymore. So what my avatar does, I'll be sitting here. I'm going to bed at 12. I'll be sitting there on a computer. I'm just going through this to so give you an example. I'm on a computer. It's 11.30. About quarter to 12, all of a sudden I start feeling a hot spot. Hot. On my leg. Usually around my hip. And what happens, what that is, is, what that is, is my avatar is taking energy out of my leg. And it gets hot. And it's swirly. And it's moving. I can feel it. I know it. It was eight years I'd known this. And he's doing it again for the last fucking year. He takes the energy. What he does with that energy is it's personal body energy. It's personal muscle energy, tissue energy. He takes it and he makes a string out of it. A string. Like a string. Okay? Nice big long string. What he does then is he wraps it from my inside my leg where my crotch is he puts the string between where my hip connects to my bone so he takes the string puts it in there and it goes into my it goes into the flesh now it's ethereal string it's not a real string it's ethereal he takes it he puts it in my flesh where my hip connects right into my crotch and it it feels like this on your skin and it's constant it's tingles so bad it drives me nuts when he does that is when I lay down and go to bed he takes the string ties it to the floor in my place in St. Lucian so my soul cannot go taking off and having a good time. They don't want me to have a good time because I get in a fight or play hockey or I get hurt. No more of that shit. So he ties me down with the string he just made. He puts it in my hip, ties me to the floor, and then my wife and kids sit over top of me and stare at me all fucking night. I wake up in the middle of the night and here's my kids and here's my wife. And I'm bored as fuck. I want to go beat the shit out of somebody ten times worse now. I want to go fight. I want to go play hockey. I want to go do stuff. But I can't. I sit all night with my wife staring at me. And oh, it drives me nuts. I can't do anything. I can't go. I can't explore. I can't hang out with my friends. I can't hang out with my cousin. Nothing. Nothing. I just sit right here. My soul is stuck right here. Duct tape to the goddamn floor in San Lucian in my home. And I can't stand it. After fucking eight years of listening to my kids and my wife, I, I start to lose it when I want to go do something. I want to go play hockey. I'm going to play fucking hockey. And so anyway, my uh, I got in a fight with my avatar. All last night, all night. That's all he was doing was putting that damn thing in me, and I cut it, and I fall asleep. I wake up; it's it's tangling my legs, and it's driving me nuts. I cut it. Now what I do is I reach I reach down spiritually, grab the cord, and I cut it. And then he makes another one, stuck to my legs, sticks me to the floor. As soon as I'm cutting him, he's he already got more waiting. I don't know what there are. They're just twine or cord. And he uses it and sticks, sticks, it, sticks me into the same illusion. Into the floor or whatever. Into the chair. I can drive it. Anyway. I beat the hell out of him last night. I lost it. I lost it. After eight years I fucking lost it. I'm sorry. I lost it. I said I beat the shit out of him. I punched him right in the face. Knocked his fucking teeth out. Totally brutal. And then. Crace goes. That's abuse. You're going to hell. Or you're going. You're going. So he didn't say, I'm going to hell, but he said, you're going to pay for that shit. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. I, and I told Christ, I go, I don't even give a fuck. 
Send me to hell. Send me to Hades, wherever you gotta go. Send me to jail. Fucking anything but looking in this damn apartment and my wife sitting on top of my head all fucking night. I don't care where you send me. And I turned over to my avatar and I said, look, you fucking do it again. And I woke up, this is the morning, I said, look, you, you do this again, and I, I'm being nice here. I go, you do it again, I'm going to fucking cut you in half, I'm going to kill you. I don't care. You heard, I'm going to kill you. I'm, I fucking will, I will. I've had it, I fucking had it. Over the top had it. Christ is pissed off, my wife is pissed off, everybody's pissed off. So... I got no sleep last night. I had to wake up at 7, take my mom. We drove all morning. I almost got killed by a semi coming. I'm driving down the road. There's a semi truck, two lane, two lane road. I'm driving, and as the semi truck starts getting close, he veers into my lane, halfway into my lane. I am driving two wheels on the, barely on the cement. The other side of the two wheels, the other side of the car is on gravel. My mom is like a dying because this truck is doing, I'm doing 100. The truck's doing a fucking 100. And at 80, because no one can fucking drive right, the fucking guy just swerves right into us. Almost a head on. Almost fucking got smoked. If he was over anymore, I'd have been in the ditch into a cornfield. Oof. Anyway, after that, we drove out to the res, bought a bunch of stuff, got some gas, it's all cheap, unbelievably cheap. Then we come back to Chad, and then we go grocery shopping, grocery shopping, two fucking stores, two hours in each store. <sighs> anyway, I got nothing, I just had to drive my mom around, because she can't do it. So, that's what I did all morning. I get home, I eat, I go to bed, here comes the cord. I go, and he, he, he's pulling from my, uh, anyway, he's pulling the cord, and it's driving me nuts, so I took my sword, and I chopped him in half, right through, then I grabbed his, then I grabbed him right here, and I ripped his skin off, pulled it off, threw it away, and now, the ethereal skin is what you present your soul presents when you're, okay? So your skin, your clothes, all this. You can rip it off. Rip. All of it. And you're just blank, more or less. You're just a clear person. So I ripped the skin off. Oh, then, I go, I told you. And before I did that, before I did that, I went to my inner light and I prayed. I go, Mom, I don't know what the fuck I'm about to do, but I can't take this anymore. So you gotta help me out. You gotta help me out. I, I prayed to my inner light, to my mom. And I prayed to her. I said, you gotta fucking help me out. I can't take it. I'm gonna lose it. And I lost it. And I go, I'm gonna kill my avatar. <laughs> right now. Here you go. So help me out. And the hell, the hell, I'm letting everything go. I went total, total chaos, man. Cut my avatar in half, ripped the skin off, put my fist down his throat. And then... I rolled over, and I took two pills, two uh, aspirin, before I, uh, so I could go to sleep. Rolled over, fell asleep. I figured, Jesus is fucking going to send me to hell. I'm going to jail. You know, I don't even care. I don't even care. So, I accepted the worst. Fell asleep. Didn't even care. Because I was so beat. I woke up, and I'm going to stop here. So I'm going to have to make this video. Hold on. So I fall asleep. I go into a dream, but not till later. I slept for like six hours almost in the afternoon. Because <laughs> I never got any at night. And I never got any in the morning. And I slept like six hours. So anyway, I go, I'm in, right before I wake up, I'm in a dream. And there, I'm in this parking lot, this gravel parking lot, and there's three trucks sitting side by side, transport trucks. And two of them, 
Well, they all had. They were all flatbeds with something on the back. And I don't know what it was, a big load of something. And um, I'm like, wow, look at these trucks. So I'm running around, I'm looking at them. And uh, in the dream, I go, I'm in the dream. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm a driving one of these trucks. I just know it. I, I'm, so I get in the truck and I start driving it. And it seems to be working, right? So I drive it, but for some reason I, I don't understand, I can't, oh no, I was turning, but the sharp, I didn't turn sharp enough, and I ended up almost smashing into a tree. And all of a sudden I go, okay, 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 that didn't work. So I started backing it up slowly, to, to I didn't have enough space to turn, so I had to move the trailer, my trailer over. So I backed it up and I moved the trailer looking in the rear view mirror and I was going to put it start to put it in drive and then turn and make it out. So anyway, I started doing that. I started driving the truck and all of a sudden, for some reason, I got out of the truck. One of my friends, the other truck driver, called me out and he was my friend. So I got out of the truck. And we're, we, I went over to talk to him about something, and he decided he's going to drive this truck. I'm like, fine, drive that truck. I'll drive this truck. And this truck looked nice. It was blue. It was like navy blue, navy blue. And I opened the door, and I got inside. And as soon as I got inside, I sat down, and it was like red leather, like dark red, reddish leather. And it, had, uh, it was more like a sofa in there. It was like a couch, couch chair. And it had the buttons where the, the leather went into the button like that. And I'm like, wow. And my ass just sunk into the chair. And, was the, and the chair sort of like came up around me to tuck me in real tight. Like the whole body. But I was all crooked in the chair like this. I was all crooked. And so I, I knew I had to straighten out the chair. So I reached down to the side. And there was like five buttons on each side of the chair. And so I started pushing the buttons. And the chair went... <laughs> went up and down forward like this and I'm like holy shit there's like five buttons here and I'm pressing them it's getting it all right and I got the wheel here so I'm sitting on the wheel and I, I'm, I'm adjusting everything and then I check the mirrors and the uh, the side mirrors the rear view mirrors or whatever the side mirrors on the truck I adjusted them and the whole panel of the truck was all lights and buttons and CB radios and everything and I'm like holy Christ so I start driving the truck, right? So what I do is, my uh, foot's on, the, like I think it's normal. I think it's normal, like a normal car. So my foot's on the brake, I put it into drive, and, uh, and I, I put a step on the gas, and it just goes like that. It, it had, you can hear the whistle of the, the engine. And it's rocking, it's going like that, right? And the car, it ain't going anywhere. I'm like, fuck, what did I do wrong? And I'm checking, and I'm going, do I got a neutral or drive? What's going on? And I don't know what's going on. And um, so, I, I, so I put it back in park, and I start over again. And I do the same thing again, but it won't go anywhere. And I didn't understand what was going on. I, was, I, put, I put my foot down again, put it back, and then I, I put it, I pulled it up, which I thought was in drive, and all of a sudden I kicked in, and it's going, and it started going, right? Kicked in a little bit, and I could feel the, I could feel the, it catch the trailer, the, the, the weight of the trailer, and then we started going, and I'm going, ah, oh, fuck, I'm going, I'm going, I came up to the street, I'm going, I'm grab driving, and it was real, guys, it was real, it was this real, just like this real as you can be. I get in there, I've got the truck, I'm driving it, and I come up to, I'm coming off the gravel, I'm going on the street, and I'm looking on, as it, it was really dark out, and I look left, and I look right, and there's nothing coming, and all of a sudden, I go and step on the gas, and it just goes, zoom, I couldn't figure out. I go, what the fuck? It's supposed to be gone. So, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Look at the pedals. I'm, I'm trying to see the pedals, but it's dark. I go, okay, there's a brake, there's a gas, what the fuck? And 
I go, well, maybe it's like a stick shift, right? And all of a sudden the voice goes, what's well, the problem? And I'm like, all of a sudden I woke up. I woke up in my bed. I got to go piss. What's the problem? Jesus says. I go, it fucking won't work. He goes, he goes, it's a stick shift. I go, okay, but where's the pedal for the stick shift? We you know you, you put the pedal down, the gear shift or whatever, but you press the pedal that makes it shift gears and then you go again. I go, I don't know, he goes, I can't really drive one of these. I had two hours of training on it. I've never, it's 2020 where I live, okay? I never drove a stick in my life. I did, I had like, like four hours training. I'm not good at it. And he goes, well, I'll shift the pedal. You go, you press down the pedal and then shift the gear. I'm going, I know, but I can't find a fucking pedal. There's only two pedals here. Turns out there was, it had the truck. This truck is like my, better in my apartment here. Turns out the truck, it was so real, guys. I can't even believe it. I can't believe it. Chris comes in and goes, he goes, there's the brake. The brake was here. Okay, and the, the, the pedal you press down to shift into second or third, fourth is here, like this, a little tiny one. And it was, in, to me, it was in the wrong spot. Like, I'm always used to having it over here, like gas, brake, and press that to shift, to whatever the hell this thing is called. I forgot right now. But anyway gear shifter pedal, I don't know, you hit, you hit that to shift, then you let it go, step on the gas and fucking take off, right, but you hit the brake, it negates everything, uh, fuck start all over again or something like that, so anyway, I'm trying to drive this goddamn truck, Gee, I go, I don't know how to drive it, I'm waking up, and he goes, well, you move your ass over, he goes, we'll go for a spin, he sits in it, and he goes, he goes, he goes, the gear shift pedal is just above the brake, or below the brake, or something like that. I'm like, oh, well, it's in the wrong spot for me. And that's why I couldn't drive it. And he goes, okay, let's go for a spin. He goes, and he drives up, and he turns out of the street, and he's driving his fucking truck, and he's like, this is nice, isn't it? I'm going, I can't fucking believe it. And so we're talking about driving, and then he, he goes, he's turning, he, he puts on the clicker, and he's and we're, we're going to merge onto a highway. I'm like, are you fucking... He goes, I go, there's no way I'm going on a highway. He gets on the highway, and we're booking it. We're doing like 80. We're getting up to 100, and we're flying, right? And it's unbelievable, guys. Unfucking believable We're flying, and I go, I go, this is like... And there's cars flying by, and there's a truck in front of us, and... Cars are flying by both ways, and lights everywhere, and the city stuff, and everything's going on. Like I'm, like you know, it's like the 401 we're on, and I couldn't even believe. It. I go, this is like fucking downtown Toronto. I cannot drive a stick in downtown Toronto. I'm not, like on the 401 going through Toronto. I go, there's no fucking way. I can't even drive a straight, normal, standard car going down the 401 in Toronto. I go, there's no way I could do this. I need a lot more training <laughs> before I do that. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, this gets kind of intense, doesn't it? And I go, holy shit. Anyway, he goes, okay, let's turn it off. So he turns off the road. He, he takes the merge off. He comes up, he stops, and he takes a left. He goes, which way do you want to go? I go, left. So no cars come. He goes off. He turns. He goes over. And I go, park in the parking lot. And he parks in the parking lot. So, he parks the truck, I'm still laying in bed, I got a pissed off, I go, Jesus, I gotta go pee, <laughs> I gotta go pee, he goes, <coughs> he goes, okay, and so I go, I, got it. I go, how much is that truck worth, and he goes, more than you ever get, and I'm like, yeah, and it was like, beautiful, man, oh, it was just beautiful, and that was a brand new truck, too, and, uh, so, then, I go, I'm, I'm, I'm having a piss, I'm, I'm standing up, I'm still talking, I go, where's my truck? My, I go, I go, I go, where is my, my uh, Sasquatch truck? And I go, how come mine ain't beautiful like that one? And he goes, you created it, you tell me. And I'm like, 
Well, I took it for a spin the other day. And he goes, yeah, I hate to tell you what happened after that. And he goes, he goes, you left it there, didn't you? I go, yeah, so I got distracted and I had to stop. So I pulled over and that was it. And he goes, yeah, well, if you leave your truck anywhere, the department comes and takes it away. And I go, well, can't we go get it? And he goes, it's gone. And I go, what do you mean it's gone? He goes, they took it away. It's gone. They made it go away. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he told me, he goes, if you leave your car laying around, park somewhere, and a certain amount of time they come, and they make it go poof. It's gone. And that's what they did in my car, because I left it. He goes, you drove it to Somerville, didn't you? And I'm like, I drove it, but I didn't know where I was going. I just wanted to drive. I, I, when, I'm, when I'm driving my truck in St. Lucian, in the spirit world, it's like three quarters of normal sight here. Like Normal sight, what you're seeing, normal reality. It's like three quarters of normal. So it's, it's wishy-washy, right? Because your brain's still locked into reality, but you're seeing from your spirit. So it's like, depending on where you are, sometimes it's really clear, other times it's fuzzy. And I'm about three quarters of the way. But in this dream where I was driving a truck with JC, it was 100%. I, I left the dream world, I woke up with JC in St. Lucian. 100% and it was fucking real he's got he's got a robe on he's got the the what are them pants called that are light and um, like a light fabric and he's got sandals on and he's driving away <laughs> just like any guy man he's like this is pretty fucking cool isn't it I'm like holy shit I go you got sandals he goes, oh, Jesus Christ. And I go, how can you wear all them robes all the time? He goes, that tells everybody else I'm a Jesus Christ. And he goes, when you're a Jesus Christ and you got to help the community, you'll be wearing one of these too. And I go, well, I don't think that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> and he started laughing. We're having a good time. Anyway, <laughs> when I go back to my truck, it turns out if you leave your car laying around, Department of Motor Vehicles or the city people come along and just bzz, they could go away and it don't exist anymore. So, which takes me, he told me it went away. And I was like, I was getting all sad because that was a good truck. And the reason I brought it up was because I wanted to know why this truck looked so damn awesome inside and my truck looked like Sanford and Sons, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, just grungy grunt truck, you know. And he goes, You made it that way, and I'm like, Holy shit. Anyway, it was crazy. So, I'm already planning on making a new truck. I wake up, I'm sitting down at the computer, and, he, and Jesus then goes, Jesus goes, Oh, Rich, you're lucky I'm your friend. Because I went and got that truck and took it back home. And he goes, next time, don't leave your truck laying around in the middle of Somerville. And I go, what's Somerville? And he goes, it's it's a place, a suburb, a suburbia land that's called Somerville in St. Lucia. Anyway, I'm going, duly noted. I will not do that. I didn't know you couldn't do that. And that's that. But as real as it gets, holy shit. I can't even give you, uh, it's even, it's, it's almost more real than here. When Jesus takes me to St. Lucian and shows me shit from his perspective, living there, man, it's real. When I go by myself to St. Lucian, when I go to my train or my house or whatever, it's three quarters. But when I'm totally out of it, and Jesus, Jesus takes me to like Luigi's restaurant, 
man, I'm getting, I got spilling fucking pasta on my shirt. My lips are covered in pasta. I'm eating like a cow. I'm sitting there with my shirt off. They got to dress me. My wife dresses me before I go out because I'm not conscious of it. I just go right out the street in my underwear and fucking we're going to the ladies' day. <laughs> you know, and she's like, get back in here. Put your fucking pants off. And, you know, I don't think. So that's always the problem. Well, not for me, for them. Anyway, guys, that's crazy. So, my avatar still alive. He's still there. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. I don't feel like fighting. I don't want to fight. I didn't go to jail. I didn't go to hell. Jesus, after I went to sleep, totally raging, thinking I'm going to go to hell or jail or something. I have a sentence I got to do for abuse. I woke up driving a truck. He's driving the truck. He looks at me and goes, Oh, by the way, you passed. And I go, What are you talking about? He goes, Well, you you killed your avatar. And I'm going, I didn't. He goes, Pretty much. <laughs> and he goes, He goes, I go, well, Why the hell am I not in jail? Or why did you gift me? Like, why did you make me drive this truck? And he goes, Because you like driving trucks. So I thought I'd take you to drive a brand new truck. And I'm like, well, that's like a gift. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, I go, why? And he goes, because you made a promise and you kept it. I go, what promise did I make? That you would kill your avatar if you kept on doing it. And you did. So here's your gift. <laughs> you passed the test. I'm like, what? He goes, you passed. That's all we wanted. And the, he goes, on top of it, you prayed to God my inner light, mom, he goes, you prayed to God for help before you killed him. And I go, yeah, because I knew I was going to get shit by you. And he goes, yeah. So you you put in a prayer to see you through. And I go, well, I knew I was condemning myself by killing an avatar. And I go, I, I go, Jesus, I can't take it. I go, you got to find another way. I, I can't fucking take that anymore. All night long, all night, this cords in my crotch tingling like a fucking crazy for eight years. I can't take it anymore. I can't take the voices in my head, which are almost gone. I can't, there's a bunch of things I can't take. And that was one of them. And I lost it on him. And I told him, so basically I told my avatar, I'm going to kill him if he keeps on doing it. Then I prayed to God to help me out through it, after it. Because I knew I was going to hell. Because Jesus was going to put me there. And uh, whatever the fuck he's going to do. He's going to make me pay for it. 10,000 years of abuse lessons. And so I told my avatar. I'm going to kill you. I can't. You fucking do this anymore to me. I'm going to kill you. I prayed to my God. Prayed to my myself. Mom inside me. I said help me out. I'm going over the fucking red line today. I'm killing my fucking avatar. <laughs> <laughs> and I did I fucking killed him I, oh yeah after I ripped the skin off I grabbed him by the throat and I fucking so my fingers touched and I just fucking squeezed like that anyway yeah over the red line man I was raging so bad but because I told him Basically, I said, look, it, this is your last chance. I, if it happens again tonight, when I, now when I go to sleep, if it happens again, I'm going to kill you. I pray to it. And that's what Christ wanted me to do. He goes, you prayed. You made, you go, you made a promise. And you prayed to God to help you out. And then you kept your fucking promise. <laughs> I go, Yeah. <laughs> And I go, you know what? He goes, what? And I go, I was holding back. <laughs> he goes, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He goes, when I am by the throat, he goes, I was holding back. I could have dripped his fucking head right off. But anyway, that's that. So,
Yep. That's what happened, guys. And that truck, man, when he was driving it, when I was driving it, it was so real. The engine, you can hear the engine whistling, like the turbo. <laughs> that type of stuff, whatever. I don't know, I'm not a fucking truck sound maker. But anyway, unbelievable, guys. And that's been my last two days. So, I'm going to, I still got that truck, I'm going to convert it, and I'm going to start converting. I guess, hopefully, the war is over. I'm not going to be angry anymore, and I get back to making stuff, and creating an illusion for myself. And they say, oh, man, what they create there is perfect. I thought my truck was damn good when I saw this, put it to, made it look like crap. This truck was nice. Every button worked. The seat moved up and down. The gear shift was there. And the windows, everything was pristine, clean. And the seat just fucking hugged you. You could sit there and cruise for like 100 years. Unbelievable. It was so real. It was so real. If you're, if you're a Christian, you got nothing to worry about. Don't fear death, man. <laughs> if you're going to St. Lucian, it's a hell of a lot better in here, I can tell you that. Don't lie to yourself when you're going down to the shitter. So don't lie to yourself. Later, guys.